How's it going guys? Derek Craig here with oilfoodbasics.com. Today I'm going to be talking about a designed frack pumping schedule. So this is actually a design that was actually ran uh, here in Utica Shale here in Ohio. I pulled it off the public access um, ODNR site. So this is all public information I'm about to show. But I'm going to go over the, the language and just kind of like the overall thoughts on a pumping schedule just kind of help you to be able to interpret it, know what's going on and show you the most important parts of it basically. And so we're going to dive in. But before we do, uh, the next video that I'm going to post is basically going to be this stage executed in the field. So we're going to see the treatment schedule. So I'm going to kind of be going over that um, in the next video. And but before that, we're going to understand what they're attempting to do. So Again, this is so this is a design pumping schedule for stage two of a lateral. So you've got your overall lateral, and then you're dividing that up in little stages, and you're isolating those stages with plugs. So this is a plug and perf design. And now it's time for the frack crew, in this case it's Keen, working on this well, to execute this pump schedule as designed. So this is a design schedule, and then here is their as pump schedule. So it shouldn't it should be very close. Uh, but the, we're going to go over the design one just because it's slightly simpler and we don't have to worry about um, You know, these are exact numbers here. They're kind of more rounded because this is the this is the plan This is as executed. You're never going to get it 100% you know on the head. So anyway, so we're going to go over this schedule for stage two now before we dive into it, I want to Mention that within a stage so stage two. This is stage two of the lateral but within a pumping schedule, you have multiple stages that you're going to execute. Okay, so that's basically just different parts uh, within this pumping schedule uh, within this stage two of the well. And I, hopefully that's not confusing you more, but basically when you set out to hydraulically fracture a stage in a well, you're not just going to start throwing sand in it and pumping sand in the well. You're going to start and you're going to, as we're going to see right here, you're going to start off, you're going to have a little bit of acid. You're going to pump acid at a slow rate, so this is your rate that you're pumping at surface, so 10 barrels a minute in this case, in this design, you're going to be pumping at a slow rate and basically getting that down to the perfs, helping clean that up a little bit and getting that well and that near, near well reservoir ready for the fracturing treatment that you're going to throw at it, okay? So after that, you're going to start basically a pad. So a pad is when when you're actually going to establish that fracture network okay so you're actually going to be pumping at a pretty high rate in this case they're going they're targeting 85 barrels a minute you're not just going to go from 10 to 85 you're going to ramp it up and watch your pressure your pressure is going to be your limitation always pretty much so you're going to try and head towards 85 barrels a minute basically you're going to try and get as high of a rate as you can and establish that fracture network so this is actually when that reservoir is actually going to fracture. So you're going to, to get 85 barrels a minute, you're going to have a really high surface treating pressure that you're applying with the pumps. That's going to fracture the formation and get it ready for sand that you're going to begin throwing at it next. So your volume here on that is, so they're throwing 214 barrels a minute, or two, I'm sorry, 214 barrels that they're going to be pumping at roughly 85 barrels a minute if they can get there. And that's going to last about two and a half minutes. And then they're going to start pumping sand. So whenever you go to start pumping sand, you're going to start out with your smaller grain size. So typically in the shale plays, that's 100 mesh. There, there are things like micro mesh that's even smaller than that kind of nano mesh, whatever you want to call it. Uh, 100 mesh is pretty typical, and this is a typical slick water design. This is about a year, year and a half old uh, when this well was actually fracked. So I don't know how if people are using nano mesh or micro mesh more often, but this is the smallest that they're using in this design, so you're going to start with that. So you're going to start with 100 mesh, and again, you're going to try to keep your barrel or your, your barrels per minute, your rate constant through your entire treatment. Uh, in this case, we got diverters. I'll get to that here in a couple minutes. But otherwise, you know, you're, you're basically keeping at 85 barrels a minute in this case there to actually put away this frack. So if you keep your rate steady, you can help watch for pressure spikes and help so you don't actually screen out the well. So you can kind of monitor your pressure and know that it's not being affected so much by your rate. So it's kind of why you try to keep that stable and also because that's a it's it's a it's a pretty high rate to actually put away all the sand so it's going to help you. So the sand they're going to start out so again you're going to start with your smaller mesh size your smaller grain size but you're going to start at a very small concentration and then work your way up. So concentration in this case so uh, pounds per gallon 
And so this first part, when they first start pumping sand, they're going to be pumping 100 mesh, and they're going to be pumping 1,000 pounds of it. So they're going to start it out at a 0.1 pounds per gallon concentration. Okay, so that's going to take a little while. Um, well, they're pumping 85 barrels a minute, so it won't take too long. <laughs> but as you see, that only lasts really about two, three minutes. But anyways, you'll start out as low concentration, then they're going to start bumping it up. So you're going to bump it up so that you don't screen out. You don't want to just throw... So the highest concentration they go looks like um, about 1.75 1, 1. pounds per gallon. You're not just going to throw that at it right off the bat. You're actually going to, you're going to ramp it up, make sure that the well and the formation is taking it. And you're going to start with your smaller mesh size and then work your way up in concentration and size. So if you imagine the, the well bore when it's completed, you've got your smaller mesh on the outer extents. And then in your near well bore, you've got higher or bigger grain sizes, bigger mesh sizes, and also a higher concentration of it. So obviously you're going to want that near well bore propped well, because if your near well bore closes off after you and after you stop the treatment, then, you know, it doesn't matter if you have prop it in the out, you know, outer portions of the frack, if, if it can't make it to the well, if you're, if you're, what you're trying to produce your oil and gas can't make it to the well. So that's kind of a little bit of the, the philosophy and the reasoning behind this. And again, this is, I'm trying to give you the very brief rundown and it's not even brief, <laughs> but anyways, so you're going to work your way up and then here they start doing 40, 70. So again, they're switching to the higher mesh size to add that near well bore conductivity. And again, here's their profit and volume and they're cumulatively counting their profit and volume here. And you can see overall when this stage is done, they should have pumped about 280,000 pounds of propin, so sand. And so after they get, in this case, they're running diverters. So after they run so much sand, uh, so after they get so far in their pumping schedule, they're going to stop and kind of flush the well. So they're going to flush the well, same rate. They're, gonna, they're basically shutting off their sand and going to try to clean off that, clean out the well bore. Um, so that's probably if you do the math and look at the, the well uh, information, that's probably about, uh, casing volume or casing and a half volume of that well. So in terms of barrels, so 452 barrels. So they're going to try and clean out that casing before you run diverters. So, so in other words, you know, if you have an issue or something, you don't want sand um, in your casing where it could settle down and and cause a basically a, a sand plug. Basically, <laughs> you know, plug off your well with a bunch of sand. Um, and also, they'll want to make sure it's clear before they run the diverters. So. The diverter is basically going to plug the existing frax, uh, fracture network at surface. So basically the thought of a diverter is basically you pump it, it, it plugs, you know, the the frax or the fracture networks that are getting the most attention or the most rate or even all of them, right? You're basically plugging off what you just did and then you're going to start pumping again and try to reestablish new fractures and new fracture networks. And those diverters then over time, and I don't think it takes too long, will actually dissolve. So you're not losing what you just did. You're just basically diverting the rest of the treatment into a new section of the reservoir, a new portion of the reservoir in that stage that wasn't treated or wasn't receiving you know, very much of the treatment. So that's the philosophy with the diverter. And so we see before they pump the diverters, they um, go to a flush, so no sand volume. And they pump the diverter at a very slow rate. You're not going to want to, you know, pump your diverters at a very fast rate. You're going to want to, you know, get them down to the bottom and then go at a slower rate to actually help them to sit, and so you don't like obliterate them right <laughs> into the perfs. Um, and then, so from there, you're going to start a pad again. So again, a pad is to establish the fracture network. So they're going to try and establish the new fracture networks, and then they're going to start pumping 40, 70 sand. So in this case, they didn't actually do 100 mesh off the bat. I don't know enough about diverters, why they didn't start with 100 mesh. It's probably just because you already have a lot of fracture networks down there, just to probably to save on cost. And they're probably, just, I don't know, maybe they're just trying to test out diverters. And, you know, so there could be 100 reasons why they didn't run 100 mesh to, to re kind of start this after the diverters were pumped. But I'm not going to try and guess too much, but they didn't. Okay. And then they, so once their treatment is over, then. Again, they're going to be, sorry, before I do that, they're going to ramp up their concentration again. So they're going to ramp it up and then they get to 1.5 and they're going to shut it down. So after about, 
about an hour and, and uh, 45 minutes, they'll be basically bringing this down, um, closing off the, the stage. So they're going to start pumping their flush again. Make sure that well bore is clean. You don't want sand in your well bore when the wireline crew starts to pump down and set the plug on the next stage. You don't want them to get stuck. And also, you just don't want to leave sand in the well bore to potentially plug off your perfs or plug anything up. So they're gonna pump their, their flush, and again, they're pumping that 452 barrel, so again, that's probably like casing, casing half volume, and then they're gonna shut down and wait for the next, or with the wireline crew will come in and set their, their plug and, and perforate the next stage, and then they're gonna pump stage three, and it should look pretty similar. If you scroll down stage three, it should look pretty similar. Typically, they don't, they don't change too much all the way through the lateral. So that's a meant for it to be brief, but I know it wasn't <laughs> rundown of a pumping schedule. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, one thing I didn't go over: clean volume and slurry volume. So clean volume is basically, you know, if you're just pumping water and, and, and the chemicals that are in the water, it's basically just water. Slurry volume is with the sand. So they they distinguish between the two. But what you're actually going to be pumping at surface is your slurry rate or your slurry, right? So. Uh, that's a quick note on that and then stage time that obviously that's just how long it takes them to do that stage of that stage per se and then this is kind of the, the opposite so they were counting down um, how, how much time is left in that stage so that's pretty I think we pretty much went over everything and then this is their volume in terms of gallons of water if they're clean um, so yeah I mean I think that's that's pretty much pretty much a pumping schedule. So in the next video, we're going to look at the as executed design, uh, the, the treatment plot. And so stay tuned for that. And thanks for watching and um, hope to see you in the next one.